I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Why does this exist? Why do people read this? Why do people like this? Why would the author choose to do this? Yeah, sorry. Welcome to a tier ranking of all of the books that I read in 2021. Um, it's 175 books. Uh, my total for the year was 177 because two of the books I read twice within 2021. So we're going to rank 175. I'm not going to rank them twice. 175 books is a lot and uh, I can get a bit rambly. So I'm just going to kind of get started on this and then we'll see where we're at and I might split this into two parts if it's getting too long. I've also never in my life done a tier ranking because I kind of hate tier rankings. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, so I've never done this before. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> so this may never see the light of day because I don't even screen recording matching with this don't don't know what I'm doing but we're gonna do our best okay so I've started a screen recording hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing um but so the categories that I've come up with are ew I don't like the colors I don't know can I change the colors because like the top should be the best oh I can okay we're gonna do that because I was like why is the top aka the best red which to me means bad or well my favorite color is orange my least favorite color is purple great so we're gonna do a purple to uh, purple to orange scale. Great. So yeah, the categories are immaculate, meaning um, it's perfection. I love it. It is the wisdom of crowds. <laughs> then would read it again because I liked it so much that like, yeah, I would totally read that again. Really liked it. Once was enough is like, I liked it, but like not enough to reread it. <laughs> uh, then I don't get it, which is something that I say a lot about books that like are like really hyped. And I just like, I don't get it. Or like, this is a thing that people seem really into and I just, I don't get the appeal. Or it's like, I don't necessarily hate it, but I just, I don't get why, why. <laughs> but I do have a category called why, which is when I'm, it's a, a, a deeper befuddlement <laughs> where I'm like, why does this exist? Why do people read this? Why do people like this? Why would the author choose to do this? Why am I being subjected to this? <laughs> and then the final category is hours of my life that I will never get back because that's all I think about when I think about the fact that I have wasted time. Precious minutes of my life <laughs> that I will never recover. Yeah, I can't really think of anything worse than that. So, um, 175 books, let's let's freaking do it. So uh, these uh, are not in the order that I read them. I don't know what order they're in. They're in whatever order this website put them in. So, but I've got them all here. And the first one up is A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie that is, uh, I, I, we're gonna be here all day if I'm allowed to just gush about that. So we're just gonna put that in Immaculate and um, I don't think I need to explain that. Next is Ace, which um, I only ever talked about in the wrap up of the month that I read it. And Ace is a nonfiction book that's about, not only about the Ace identity and what that means, like defining it, but also um, kind of talking about the way that aceness is erased by everything in terms of it's not represented in media and it's also uh, not accounted for in the way that we speak to each other. Like other queerness is accounted for in the way that we speak about couples and love and whatever, but aceness is erased. Like it's like it doesn't exist. So it was just a, a really informative and also interesting and enjoyable read. And I feel like I, it was very short, but I feel like I got a lot out of it. It's weird to rate nonfiction. I guess I'll put it in would read it again because I feel like um, I read it pretty quickly and I would, I would want to read it again <laughs> so that I could get more out of it and like really, I don't know, think about those ideas. The Alienist, um, I really was excited to read because I really wanted to see the show that it's, that is based on The Alienist. And I still want to see the show, and I think I will like the show. But the book was so dry and so boring. And I swear the author, like, just had done a bunch of research. And so by gum, he was going to stick it in there. It wasn't going to have been for nothing. So even if that ended up, this, like, research that he did, even if it had no place in what he was writing about, it had no relevance to the story. He was like, I want you to know that I know this thing. I want you to know that I bothered finding this out. So it's going in the book. And you're like, why? Why are you stopping to tell me these like random historical facts 
And the story itself just like wasn't very good and the characters weren't very good. So I don't think the show is going to stop to just like tell me historical facts. Plus like the wooden characters will be helped by the fact that actors, good actors, just sort of bring a three-dimensional quality to characters by virtue of being human beings that will just the emotion that is lacking is just going to like show on their face. You know, like they, they're just like by being living, breathing humans just will flesh that out by virtue of existing so and i've heard i think pretty good things about the show anyway so i still watch the show but this um i'm gonna put it in why because i really didn't like it and i was like why sir are you doing these things <laughs> american hippo uh this is one of the books that was assigned to me by bethany american hippo is a book that was assigned to me by bethany when we swapped tbrs and I hated it. <laughs> so it is a, an alternate history that um, the thing that inspired it is actually very interesting to me. Although I shouldn't say very interesting, but it was the most rewarding thing about being forced to read this was like learning that. I was like, oh, I just had no idea. But I learning that thing, I was like, I don't know that there is that much to say about it as like maybe a short story. And so this is a bind up of like two novellas and, and two short stories. And it felt very thin even for that. But um, basically, at some point in American history, they considered, the government considered importing hippos and ranching them. Obviously, the U.S. government decided to not go with the hippo plan. But this book or these stories um, are set in an alternate America where they decided to go with the hippo plan. And the thing is, like, it doesn't really do anything with that concept. Like, if you're going to, like, the thing that would make that interesting, but the thing that would be interesting to explore about that is, like, the repercussions that would have on society and culture, the economy, the landscape of America. Like those are the things that would be affected by this that would be interesting to examine. But this the books or the the stories had no interest in exploring that. It just wanted to tell like this little like adventure story with some really flat cardboard cutout characters. And then like they also have like hippos around cuz like isn't that fun? And I'm like what's interesting about the idea that America considered doing this is like that would have had massive repercussions potentially. And that's just like not what we're here to do. In which case I'm like, why did you bother with this at all? Why not just like tell a, a historical fiction story in an America where these are horses because it would change almost nothing. So I was just, and I just didn't think there were any, it wasn't like, okay, I wish you'd examined the hippo thing, but these are good stories. Like I thought the stories were really weak and the characters really wooden flat and uninteresting and it was just not for me and it, it felt even though like this is an alternate history it's still uh I feel like it's still appropriate to say it feels anachronistic because like a lot of it was like oddly modern for the era of America that this is alternately examining uh, I guess this goes in why because like why wouldn't you examine the premise that you chose for this story. Uh, then Ariadne, which is a, it was sort of pitched as, you know, some, like for fans of Circe, for fans of Song of Achilles, uh, that kind of thing. And I love Circe and I love Song of Achilles. And this was just not it. This was like a, a pale imitation of that. It feels like, I don't think it's in, inaccurate to say that about it. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just not nearly as good as that. So, if you're the part about it that's inaccurate is that it's setting up the expectation that you're going to have a story that's that good that you're going to have. Yeah. It, it, in that sense is inaccurate because it wishes it was Madeline Miller. Um, there just like, wasn't that she wasn't doing anything that interesting with the story of Ariadne, which wasn't a story that I had been that interested in the first place, but I wasn't, I'm not that big a fan of myth and particularly Greek myth in the first place. So like, it's not like I picked up Circe and Song of Achilles because I'm obsessed with the Iliad or with, uh, the Odyssey. I don't really care about those stories in the first place. It was Madeline Miller's amazing take on them that I was there for. So it's not like, oh, I'm obsessed with the story of Ariadne. Um, and it's not like, oh, I don't like Ariadne, therefore I would never have liked this. Um, I don't care about Achilles and I don't care about Circe, but I liked those books because they were well written. Um, and Ariadne, I was like, well, I don't care about Ariadne, but like, if you want to write a good book about Ariadne, sure. Uh, it just wasn't, <laughs> wasn't a very good book in my opinion. It was like entirely adequate. So I should have maybe <laughs> changed the name of this category to just adequate. Um, can I still change it? Oh, I can't. I'm going to rename it adequate. <laughs> there you go. I think Ariadne was entirely adequate. Um, then Assassin's Quest, which is the third book in the Farseer trilogy. Oh, I love Farseer. I didn't like Assassin's Quest as much as I like Royal Assassin. It was, it's so good. And Fitz and the Fool and every... Oh, it's, it's so good. And Nine Eyes. 
See, I just become increasingly incoherent when I like something. That's why my rants are rudder. I'm very coherent and I'm very articulate about why I hate something. If I like something, I'm just like, night eyes, oh, oh, and it's just meaningless noises. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and put Assassin's Quest in Wood Read again. We'll reserve Immaculate for Royal Assassin. So next is Bear and the Nightingale, which is one of the books that I read twice in 2021. And Bear and the Nightingale, well, I have read it three times now. So obviously I would read it again. Um, I think this gonna, is going to go in Immaculate because it is so beautiful. It's such just like absolutely masterclass in like what fairy tale retellings should be, what historical fiction has the capacity to be, what when people talk about purple prose, like you can't just put a bunch of adjectives in. Like you actually have to be lyrical and artful and poetic in what you're telling and the story you're telling and the way you're telling it and the way that it just transports you to this magical Russia is pretty unparalleled so yeah, yeah that deserves to be an immaculate before they are hanged <laughs> um it's become possibly my favorite in the original trilogy it wasn't before I just does it go in Immaculate or would read it again? Because obviously I would read it again. I've read it three times and I'm about to read it a fourth time. <laughs> so like would read it again is at the very least where it's going to go. But is it Immaculate? It's not Immaculate. The original trilogy has, has flaws. Yes, that's right. You heard me. Abercrombie is not perfect. Um, so we're going to put that in would read again because it's just accurate. Um, best served cold. I liked it a little less on my reread. So... I don't think I can put it in Immaculate. I would have after my first read, um, but now that I've read it again, and it's not as fun to reread as the other Abercrombie books are, even the First Law Trilogy, um, which originally I liked Best of Cold better than the First Law Trilogy, but the First Law Trilogy is more fun to reread. I think on a first read through, Best of Cold is a better first read, but rereading the trilogy is better. It's got more like, it, like, it rewards a reread more than Best of Cold does. So we're just gonna put it and read it again because I'm gonna read it again, obviously. <laughs> the Black Company, oof. Um, I read this, I picked it for Blades and Vatis Rippers and I didn't like it either. So it's not like I can blame the ladies. Like sometimes Blades and Vatis Rippers has bad books and it's my fault. <laughs> I'm not uh, upset that I read it though. Uh, so this will not go in hours of my life. But uh, I mean, I read it and wanted to read it because as a sort of student of the genre, as somebody who likes Grimdark, I wanted to sort of see one of the granddaddies of the genre, which the Black Company is often credited with being sort of one, if not the first, then one of the first, like the progenitors of the Grimdark genre or subgenre. Um, so like, I think I'm going to put it in I don't get it because I, uh, my like main reaction to it was, I'm really glad that this happened. I'm really glad that people read this and wanted to continue writing Grimdark. I don't understand how anyone could read that and be like, we need more of this. Because <laughs> reading that would put me off Grimdark. But um, apparently it did. I am grateful for that. <laughs> um, then The Black Tongue Thief, I was surprised by how much I enjoyed that. Maybe not surprised, because I, I guess uh, I had really high hopes for it. And then I heard pretty middling reviews when it came out. People who had had arcs of it or were reading it right when it came out were like mm, not that impressed with us so I feel like I I mean I had a really good time reading it but I don't think it was that good and I definitely credit my enjoyment um largely like a lot of the credit goes to the narrator which is the actually the author so does that mean he still gets the credit does that mean it's a good book because uh, he had a fun energy when he read it and like the singing of the songs really helped and it oddly enough reminded me of Angela's Ashes which is one of my favorite books. Adequate it seems a little I don't think it was that good and I don't know that I would read it again so we're gonna we're gonna put that in Adequate. Blade itself I'm just gonna put that in would read it again because we know that I would. I just did <laughs> time. From Blood and Ash to Blaze of Bodice Rippers pick, which was atrocious. I vlogged my painful journey, but which of the bad categories does it go in? I don't know if it quite deserves hours of my life, but I, I mean, this did win, I think, Goodreads Choice Awards, and like, there's a bunch of special edition boxes for it, and people are obsessed with this, and this is a situation where like, it's not even, like with Sarah J. Mass, I would probably still put it, or Sarah J. Mass, I would put in like, I don't get it, because like, I don't feel that way, but with From Blood and Ash, it's in why. <laughs> because why is this popular? Why do people like this? This is beyond I don't get it. This is just, please explain why. <laughs> uh, Maggie Steve Otters, 
Blue Lily Lily Blue. I really, really enjoyed. Would I read it again? Um, I think I would. I would think I would read the whole Raven Cycle again. So we're gonna put that in. Would read it again. Box in the Woods, um, which is a Truly Devious novel, but it's not part of the Truly Devious series. It's just like the character from Truly Devious solving a different mystery. And I feel, and I said this when I like did it in my wrap up, that like, when I did it in my wrap up, when I talked about it in my wrap up, that I felt like Truly Devious was stretched a little thin, like three books was like, too much for that mystery. But one book was not enough for Box in the Woods. So I'm going to put this in adequate. Because like I enjoyed it, but I was like, that's, that's too fast. Then Broken Girls by Simone St. James. Um, I was pretty disappointed with this, especially because I'd heard such amazing things about Simone St. James and about that book specifically. Like, I didn't think it was bad. I just felt like it, I just don't think it executed its plot that well. And I felt like it was a little ham-fisted about some of the points it was trying to make to the, to the detriment of the plot. So we're going to put this in adequate. I almost put it in, I don't get it because it does get a lot of praise and I kind of don't get it, but it was adequate. Broken things not to be confused with broken girls even though it has girls on the cover it was also adequate like i didn't think it was very good but i don't think it was bad it was like a fine ya thriller that was like it was fine burning god Ooh, uh, i'm gonna have to put this in adequate because i don't think it was great and i wouldn't read it again <laughs> I feel like the project of this book, of these books, is to be commended, but I don't think that it was that enjoyable of a reading experience, and the characters are pretty one note, and yeah, sorry, but <laughs> Called Out the Hawk, which is the spin-off series from the Raven Cycle, which is about Ronan Lynch, uh, my favorite character. I might have to put this in adequate, because like, it's kind of a, it's not as bad as King of Scars, I liked it a lot better than King of Scars. But it's a similar situation to King of Scars where like the idea of having a spinoff about this really beloved character sounds appealing, but in practice isn't that good. And also just like with King of Scars, for a book about Nikolai, King of Scars isn't that much about Nikolai. And for a book about Ronan Lynch, Call Down the Hawk isn't that much about Ronan Lynch. Like I'm going to continue with the spinoff series, but it's a bit of a letdown. Then The Castle of Lear by Lloyd Alexander. I, I really enjoyed my journey through the Chronicles of Prydain, and Castle of Lear was no exception, and I would read it again. Christmas Carol would definitely read it again. It's a classic for a reason. I'd never actually read it before, so it's fun actually. Like I felt like I'd read it before because I'd seen so many versions of it, but I hadn't actually ever read it before, so it was really nice reading it. Clash of Kings, I definitely would read it again. Is it immaculate? Oh, it's not immaculate but I would definitely read it again. That was my second time, and, like, I'd forgotten how good George R. R. Martin is. That's We're just going to be putting all the Song of and Fire books in. I'm, I might put one of them in Immaculate. Claw of the Conciliator is the second book in the Book of the New Sun. I don't know if I can rate them. I mean, I did rate them separately. They are separate books. I think I would put it in, would read it again, and not even because, like, oh, it was so good, I want to read it again, more just because, like, I think I need to read it again. Because, <laughs> pretty dense. I don't know if I got it all the first time. Clockwork Sparrow. I would read it again. It's a really cute middle grade mystery that's set in sort of Edwardian era and it's just it's very good in terms of being a mystery, in terms of having nice characters to follow, in terms of being accurate to the time. We had a great time. Dark Age. I think it's immaculate. It is Pierce Brown's best work to date in my humble opinion. And so... It goes in immaculate. And that was my second time reading it. So like, obviously it would at least be would read it again. <laughs> but I think it's immaculate. Dungeon and Cairo, I don't get it. I just, <laughs> I heard so much about Peter J. Lee Clark and I really wanted to love this world and his writing. I, the concept, I'm super sold on the concept of this like alternate version of Cairo that has actually like Jin and Ifrits and all this other like mythological stuff. And I just don't think it was very interestingly or compellingly or even like mystically written. Like for a book that's like a murder mystery set in a magical version of Cairo, like how did you make that boring? Okay. Continuing on, Deal with the Devil by Kit Rocha or Rocha. All these times that I've talked about this book and I've still never looked up how to say the author's name. I... Uh, where do I put it? I didn't like it. It made my worst book of the year. Um, But honestly, I kind of want to put it in. I don't, maybe I don't get it. I'll put it in. I don't get it. Because like, the other gals seem to enjoy their time with it. 
Uh, get it. <laughs> Devil's Divine is the second book in the Dread Nation duology. It wasn't as good as Dread Nation, but it was very good. So I would read it again. Oh no, I did not think through how this would change. Oh god. <laughs> I have to adjust. Okay. Uh, okay. And we're back. Uh, Declaration of the Rights of Magicians. This made my favorite books of the year. Um, and I am kind of obsessed with it. My channel has kind of become just like a stan account for the Shadow Histories. So, and of the two, it was definitely my favorite um, in the duology. So we're going to put that in Immaculate. Demon in White, Immaculate. <laughs> the whole, spoilers, the whole book of, uh, or the whole Sun Eater is going to go in Immaculate, I think. Maybe not The Lesser Devil. The Sun Eater, it's so good. I just, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, moving on. Destiny's Captive. Why? Whose fantasy is this? It was what I wanted to know the whole time I was reading it. That was another book, one of the books that Bethany picked for me. And I just, why? Why? <laughs> why would she pick this for me? Why would somebody want to read this? Why would somebody think this is ideal? I don't, I don't understand. I have so many questions. Uh, so the, the, why? Why, 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 why? Devil in the White City uh, was really, really good. I read this in The Alienist around the same time, and I was like, okay, Devil in the White City is actually nonfiction, and it reads more like a compelling novel than The Alienist. <laughs> um, so we're going to put that in when we read it again. The Devouring Grey was adequate. No, but it was, it was pretty shit, if I'm honest. I'm going to put that in. I don't get it. Not that there's anything specific that I don't get, <laughs> but just because, like, I'm not, like, upset by it the way I am with, like, the stuff in Y, but I just, like, I don't get it. I know there's people that like it, and I don't get it, because it's, it's not very good. <laughs> Dragon Republic, adequate. I'm sorry. I like the Poppy War better. I would put the Poppy War in, like, would read it again, although knowing how the series goes, I don't know that I would necessarily want to read it again. But like, I, I really enjoyed the popcorn, and after that, it just, like, got very samey. And for that reason, was boring and not that compelling to read. The drawing of the three was why. <laughs> I really disliked that. After everyone was like, don't judge the Dark Tower by the Gunslinger. Even Stephen King says the Gunslinger is shit. And I actually kind of enjoyed the Gunslinger. And then the drawing of the three, which many people told me, is their favorite in the Dark Tower. Um... There are so many things in that book that I'm like, why? Why would you write it like this? Why? Why was this necessary? Why would you choose to do this? Why? So, nothing goes in why. Dreams of the Dying, my worst book of 2021. And that's gonna go in hours of my life that I will never get back. Dune, I guess would read it again. This was a pretty high rating, but I've already read it twice. And I could see myself reading it again. There's a lot of stuff in there. It's far from perfect. So I will continue to be, continue to be critical of it. But I've also said many times that it's a classic rare reason. So yeah. Emberblade was adequate. I think that there's like a, a, a good story in there. But I don't think it's that well written. I don't think the characterization's that good. I don't think the prose is very good. I don't think the like the way the world building is delivered to you is very good. So like there's, there's stuff in there to like. I kind of get why people like it. But um... It didn't quite pass muster with me. Empire of Silence is immaculate. Uh, evening in the morning. I kind of forgot that I read that. I think that's adequate. It's a it's a Ken Follett book. I've never actually read. That was my first Ken Follett book. Uh, reading it, and I'd seen a few Ken Follett adaptations. So having seen the adaptations and now reading this book and hearing the criticism that Ken Follett writes the same story just in different with different names and like a different time period, I was like, yeah, he kind of does. Like, all the historical detail is really good. So being into that kind of thing, I enjoyed that. But the story is... And if, like, if he hadn't written anything else, I'd be like, the story is good. But unfortunately, I am aware that, like, this is the same story <laughs> that the other two that I'm familiar with, The Pillars of the Earth and World Without End. I was like, even those two, I was like, we have a pretty similar story here. And then evening in the morning, I was like, and again. <laughs> so... Um, Fable was adequate. Um, I kind of want to put it in I don't get it because like Fable is like really popular, especially like on Bookstagram. But like it was, I kind of get it. I just, I think it's pretty boring. 
uh, not that compelling. And I definitely didn't feel like there was any chemistry in the romance to get swept away in. But it was it was all right. And I'm like, I don't want to put it down. I don't get it. Because it also got picked for like Reese's Book Club. And like it just got like, it was like Adrian's like Adrian Young's best work to date. And I just, no, nah, I don't get it. <laughs> Fireborn, uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, and I think it deserves the hype it got. So the hype, I would say the hype from my circle, like it was pretty underhyped by people in general. Um, but like Elle who loves it and Alan who's been chilling for it. Um, and other people I think who have read it and praised it. Like it was, it was really good. So yeah. Fledgling? Mm, I guess I would read it again. I guess this is a weird metric. Uh, going from I would read it again to adequate is like quite a jump. I don't know that, like, I, yeah, in a long time from now, I could see myself rereading it. It's just, it's kind of rough. It's not fun to read per se because of the subject matter, but it was very good. It fell short here and there on certain aspects, but overall, that's when Bethany, that's one of the books that Bethany picked for me. And that one, that one was good. The Forever King was adequate. Um, this was sent to me by the author and it is a like Norse inspired world or at least like the mythology of the world is Norse inspired and we have like it's not actually like our real world it's not Scandinavia but the gods are like literally Loki is like in it and then also like an active participant in the story and that just like irks me like I don't like when like if it's a retelling of like a Norse myth sure or if it's a story about Vikings who just like believe in those things sure when you have, like, the gods of the Norse pantheon actively participating and affecting the lives of, like, people who are mortals, like, showing up and being like, hey, I'm Loki and I'm going to participate in this story. I don't know. It really ir irritates me. Uh, and not just, like, with Norse stuff. Like, I don't like it. I don't like them separate. Like, if you're going to talk about Greek myth, Norse myth, whatever, you can tell me about the myths and you can tell me about people who believe in those myths in historical times, but when they're like active participants, that really bugs me. Unless you're doing something like very creative to like really subvert that, like American gods. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for somebody to tell me that that means I can't like American gods. Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Davis was amazing. It's a like, collection of essays. Um, would definitely read that again. There was just like so much to unpack. Like I kind of wanted to read it again as soon as I'd finished it because I was like, I don't think I got it all. I highly recommend it. It's a very thought-provoking read. Game of Thrones is immaculate. It is a classic, a modern classic for a reason. Gap of Time, the retelling of the Winter's Tale. My friend Heather and I were reading the Hogarth Shakespeare's. Gap of Time was adequate. <laughs> like as a retelling of the Winter's Tale, it like the Winter's Tale is a weird play. I don't honestly get why this pick, because that's the thing, the authors got to pick which play they'd get to retell. So she picked A Winter's Tale, which is really what I don't get. But uh, yeah, it is It is what it is. Next I have Gardens of the Moon, which um, I would not read that again. I was very annoyed with it. And then things happened. So we're just going to put that in. I don't get why you would tell it like that. Ghostly Echoes was adequate. I don't have a lot to say about that. <laughs> I, I guess like, I feel like with that series, I liked it in the beginning and it's just gotten progressively like weaker. I liked the third one better than the second one, but neither is what, as good as the first one. Uh, Girl in the Tower is immaculate. It's my favorite in the Winter Night trilogy. And I already put Grey in the Nightingale up there, so. The Girl the Sea gave back. Why did we need a sequel to Sky in the Deep? This was in every way. Like, what, why Why did this exist? It didn't, didn't feel like a story that needed to be told. If it was purely to cash in on the fact that Sky the Deep was popular, then I guess that's an answer to the question. But otherwise, what was the point of that? The Goblin Emperor, I picked that for Blades of Bottom Surfers. Um, and I was the one, I think, that liked it the least. So I just never like any of my books, even when I get to pick them. Uh, so the Goblin Emperor, and it won a bunch of awards. Like, I, I want to put it in adequate, but also, like, I really don't get it. Like, I don't get why the ladies liked it, and I don't get why it won awards, and yeah, sorry. The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt was sort of painfully adequate after reading The Secret History. Um, I had high expectations. And The Goldfinch, it was fine. I liked the movie better, and the movie didn't get great reviews, so I have to tell you something. I just was like, really? The author of The Secret History wrote this? Because this feels like somebody who would want to be imitating that kind of greatness. 
trying to be deep. Guards, guards, um, is adequate. But from everything I've heard that Alan's told me, the City Watch books get a lot more interesting. The, the guards, guards is like the weakest one. So I would read on in the City Watch, and I like Ratchet. The guards, guards just like doesn't have any meat to it. It doesn't have any tofu to it. <laughs> Oh, Guns of the Dawn would read it again, and I just did read it again, and I would read it again again. Uh, it's not immaculate, but I had a really good time the first time, and I had a really good time the second time. Hagsey by Margaret Atwood um, was my favorite in the Hogarths until the last one that we read. But would I read it again? No. I just think it did its job better than the other ones, so it's it's still just adequate. Like, it really only, like, works as you're reading it as like, oh, this is a project where authors are retelling Shakespeare, not as like a book I picked up to enjoy. If you just like, it's a book I picked up to enjoy, you'd be like, half a king, adequate. Half a war, adequate. That's what I kept saying about The Shattered Sea. It's so painful to read it and know that it's written by Joe Abercrombie because it is just so entirely adequate. Um, Have Sick of Shadows. Oh boy. Is it ours? No. But why? Yes. Why did you not Google anything to do with the historical time period that you were writing in? Like, not even the littlest thing. Just, why is there hot cocoa for a child in the Arthurian times? Why? 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 Half the world is adequate. Uh, Hamnet was adequate. <laughs> I know Hamnet was like, and I know, actually, Hamnet is going to go in, I don't get it. Because <laughs> I had really high hopes for Hamnet, especially because, like, it's the kind of thing that would appeal to me in the first place, because it's, like, related tangentially to Shakespeare. And then it got praised to the high heavens by everyone that read it, and I think it won some awards. And it's about, like, the death of, ha of Shakespeare's son, Hamnet, during the plague. And the book just wasn't that good. And I don't understand why people are praising it. I just don't. Hand on the Wall... Would I read it again? I don't think that the truly devious books are the kind of books that are a mystery that is fun to revisit over and over again. Like, I don't think there'd be that much to, like, pick apart and be like, oh, spot the clues for what's to come. I feel like it's, like, a one-time through kind of thing. So we're going to put it in. Haunting of Tramcar by... Tramcar... What is it? Zero one five. Um, Is the... Yeah, the... It's also by Peter Daly Clark. I feel the same as I did about Dead Jin and Cairo. I like, I don't, I don't get how you made magical Cairo murder mystery, or not mystery in this, uh, murder mystery in this case, but a mystery in a magical Cairo. How did you make that boring? I don't get it. Hard Blood and Ashes, I don't get it. It's a, it's a bodice ripper that was for Blades of Bodice Rippers, and I, it is, I understand um, from my colleagues that it is a very, very popular barbarian romance. Like, it is well loved. And I thought it was like, it wasn't like the worst thing I'd read. It was definitely better than From Blood of Ash. But I just, I don't, I don't get it. I, especially because the dude in it was like pretty aggravating. I really liked the female main character. Sincerely, I did. And I just thought that she deserved so much better. And I was like, again, I was like, whose fantasy is this? I don't get it. Um, the High King, which is the last in the Chronicles of Ferdane. Um, I would read that again. It was my least favorite, but I would read the whole product of the day and again. It's just like a fun and traditional escapist fantasy. Um, Holopogs would definitely read that again. I'm loving the Morgan Crow books. Um, I can't wait for the fourth one. I'll probably reread them all before the fourth one comes out. And I have recently acquired, or I recently ordered. They're not they're not physically in my hands yet, but the, the UK hardcovers, which someone in the comments, um, I think my wrap up, let me know. So I was like, oh, I want some special editions. They're like, well, the UK ones are pretty nice. And I had always seen the UK ones with dust jacket on. And then I saw when they, then I looked it up when they told me, because I didn't really like the dust jacket designs. I like the American dust jackets much better. But I had no idea that beneath the dust jacket is these, these gorgeous naked books. And I was like, oh, why did I not know? So those will be mine shortly. Home Before Dark. Oh, I don't get it. <laughs> Um, I guess Riley Sager is pretty popular. I think that that book specifically is pretty popular, but it was not very good. I don't get it. Horrid was adequate. It's a like YA horror book. And I actually found it more compelling and interesting than Home Before Dark. So it was, it was fine. House of Leaves. I don't get it. 
I don't understand why people subject themselves to this on purpose. Um, but it is what it is. This is getting this is getting unwieldy. How many is that? 40, 55, 66, 66. Okay, we're not quite halfway, but um, I think this might be a good place to stop for part one, and then I'll do the rest in part two. Um, and maybe I can figure out how to have more space on my board. I've never done this before, but um, yeah. So that does it for part one. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings. Whatever you want me to know. I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times will be done on Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.